Hello everybody, uh, my turn at the uh, uh, parable story, and mine is a pretty good one. Mine's out of Luke chapter 7, 36 to 50 I believe, yeah to 50. Excuse me, it's in the New Living Translation, I don't know if that matters <clears throat> to whoever's listening, but uh, I just thought <clears throat> I'd start reading off the parable right off the top. So it... Jesus is anointed by a sinful woman. Luke 7, chapter 36. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went with him to his home and sat down and ate. When a certain immoral woman from the city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. She knelt behind him at his feet, crying, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she weep, wiped them off with her hair. She kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on him. When the Pharisees who invi had invited him saw this, he said to himself in his head, he didn't, didn't speak it aloud, he said it to himself, if this man is a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. <clears throat> Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him a story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces of silver to another. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debt. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, well, I suppose the one who canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water or wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss from the time I first came in. She has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her, sin, her, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. She has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, "Your sins are forgiven." The man at the table, um, the men, sorry, at the, at the table among themselves, said, "Who is this man who goes on around forgiving sins?" Then Jesus said to the woman, "Your faith has saved you. Go in peace." So there's a couple of things I wanted to uh, <clears throat> address in here, and first off, uh, uh, they talk, he's talk, Jesus is talking about how uh, anointing. It's a, it was customary normally when you come come into a home that they it would anoint you with oil, and uh, back then, as you know, it made it made you feel feel special. It made you feel like a a, a, a special guest, a welcome to the house, and. Um, the other thing is is that the the lady who uh, it says she, in here she was an, a certain immoral woman, and different different translations called her uh, sinful, called her um, <clears throat> called her a prostitute, called her well sinner, a harlot, all the all the other names. Anyhow, needless to say, a lady came from a rough background and and and. Uh, so it started uh, started getting me to think about about the um, about the lady and her tears and crying and how um, how how Jesus views our tears and views views our sorrows and 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 I was thinking about the time. So anyhow, I think about time that's been passed when I was a kid, and um, so here we're going to go to Psalm fifty six. 
uh, verse 8. It says, You keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in, a bo in your bottle. You have recorded each, each one of your tears in your book. Now, I started thinking about that and thinking about how uh, me, my life, and, and for those of you who don't know, I grew up in a highly dysfunctional home. home. My dad was constantly, uh, there was rarely a day that I wasn't called useless or stupid in my house. And there was times when my father worked with me and my brothers, my brother and sister, really, really hard. We'd be up in the morning and and we wouldn't stop for dinner. We wouldn't stop for uh, lunch. And you'd be tired and you'd be exhausted. And you start, and he would just start berating you and <clears throat> and calling you useless and, 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 and uh, among other names. And I can remember crying just because just I, I was exhausted. I had no food in me. And I had nothing left in the tank. I had nothing left in the tank. And he'd be sitting there calling, calling me all those horrible names in front of my neighbors and, my, and my, my family. And to the point where I just couldn't take it anymore. And I just broke down. And and those are different tears, clearly, than, than the, the lady who's, 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 who's uh, uh, washing Jesus' face, feet, feet with, it, with her uh, tears. And I, I, mean, I've, I've, I saw this, that he keeps track of all our sorrows and he has recorded each and every one of our tears. And I was thinking, oh, well, first off, I, I can't imagine some of us, you guys in the house there, and, uh, me, and people who I've come across in my past who were sad and had, uh, had, to, had struggles with depression. And uh, he has... Oh, each and every tear and our tears are again when we were at our worst were different significantly diff worse or different rather than this lady this lady's tears were tears of of, of thankful thankness thankfulness and forgiveness and worshiping she 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 was a lady with a rough past and a rough way of life and a rough way of earning a living and clearly, in those days, as in now, I'm sure, quite sure that somebody that earning earning a living like that does not exactly um, feel good about themselves. As some of us in the past, some of the things that we've done to earn money or survive, how we uh, view ourselves, and and if somebody could just go, hey, if, it, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. That was those, those, those things that you've done are now washed free. They're washed clean. And she, she, uh, this lady. They don't give her name, but different, different, different people or different scholars suggest that maybe Mary Magdalene. But there's not much biblical proof to back that up. And regardless, <clears throat> the um, it's, it started me thinking about the, the different times and, and and the different types of tears that we that we have and, and and the reason we cry. And like I said, this lady was crying because she was forgiven; her slate was wiped clean because she believed in who Jesus is and was. He was during then. He was the. Uh, God, God made human. He was God walking the ground. And the, 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 uh, I was just thinking about the shame that goes along with that too, that being that poor lady and, and some of us, the shame of, of, of our past and the shame of, of, and, and, uh, I can remember when I was a young man struggling with depression and, and, and as a result of growing up like this with my father and my, uh, uh, my family and uh, every day being called useless and saying that I was gonna be a bum and that I was never gonna make it anywhere and just feeling just to the to the point there's I mean there's different kinds of there's depression tears there's tears because you're you just feel empty there's tears because you and, and just you feel just so sad it's so what's the, profoundly sad is the word I'm looking for that there's no hope no hope and that nobody could love you, and that you're empty. And I can remember I'd have 
back in the day, I'd have, I've been married 30 years now, so I've been, before I met my wife, well, clearly, I don't know why I keep saying before I met my wife, but the, uh, uh, I'd have a girlfriend, and then I'd, I'd drop her off, and I'd go home, and I'd just cry because of the emptiness. I'd be crying, sobbing, because of how lonely I felt, because of depression. And just laying on the floor, just like just laying on the floor, just sobbing. And, and I can remember being a young man living at home, listening to my father mistreat my family and just crying because I wanted to get out. That's not what this, this lady's crying. That's not why this lady has tears. This lady's tears are thankful. Thankful for being saved. Thankful for, for wiping the slate clean. And I, uh, I, I just can't, uh, I can't imagine. When I, I find it very, I, I was reading, I came, when, I, when I came across this, that every sorrow, every, and it's every tear, every drop, neighbor dog, sorry, every tear is recorded. And that, and this is the weird, this is not the weird thing, but here's the amazing thing. He says, every tear is collected in your bottle. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering that if, 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 if we, if there's a spot, when we pass away, when we go to heaven, we can go, look at the size of the bottle. Big, little, hopes, depending on who's, who's what, and who's where. I, 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 I find it, I find it, uh, I don't know what the word is, not special, because that doesn't put it in the proper, uh, how I feel about it. I find it amazing. That in, in our time, when we feel, when we feel most empty, when we feel most low, that, that he's collecting everything. He's collecting our tears. He's collecting our sorrows. And each and every tear that we cry for, each and every time we felt ashamed, every time we felt bad about who we did, or if, or what we did, or who we lost, He's recorded those tears. And so, I, I again, I was reading some more, and I found in Revelations 21.4, he says, he, he will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things will be gone for heaven, ever. This is once we're in heaven. The concept of, of never... Never having to cry a, a tear over death. Never having to see somebody sick again. Never to have your heart wretched out because, because of sadness. Or because of, of, of somebody passing away, some drunk driver swerving off the lane and killing some poor innocent person, a friend, a family member. No more tears about how, how you lived your life. I, I, the idea of that, I find pretty profound. That the thoughts of never having to have, have a worry again, to never have a, to feel the emptiness or pain of, or suffering. And I started thinking about this. This is uh, that we can define our future. We, it, 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 I can remember being upset and that I had no future, that I had no. No, that I'm 50, I just turned 53. And I can remember being a young man thinking, there's no way I was going to make it a 30. There was no concept of my future, our future goals, or our life, life after this moment when I was upset, or this moment, a life after when I was partying. It was always for the now, not for later. And... That can change. That changes. That can change. And it says, you, uh, "He will wipe every every tear from their eye, from our eyes." I tell you, I don't enjoy crying. I, I don't get them. I'm not an emotional guy anymore. When I was depressed and are upset, ugh, I was lonely. I was sad. I was at the lowest of low. Now the only thing that really makes me get emotional is I have. For those of you who don't know. 
I have two boys. They're turning 16 and 19. And I have a wife. And, and the, uh, they're everything to me. They, I, 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 if I talk about them, well, I, that'll get, then I'll get choked up. But I was, it's funny, it's funny my son brought it, brought this up just recently. He was talking to, just, just actually, maybe an hour before I started this video. He was talk, talking about something that he'd come across on, on YouTube. And I have to tell you, this, uh, his question is just a demonstration of how God has blessed my life. There was a video, and they were doing that. My son was watching, and it was a survey, and it was asking people in the United States or North America, I believe. I think a hundred people had they ever thought thoughts of suicide. Have they ever thoughts of of harming themselves? And a bunch of people said no. So a bunch of people said no. Nope, never, never, never occurred to them. A bunch of people said, "Oh yeah, I, I, it, uh, 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 it did cross their mind." And then there were some people who. They tried it, but were obviously, thankfully, unsuccessful. And my boy, thank you, Jesus, and I mean, thank you, Jesus, my boy said he couldn't understand the concept of that, of, of, of the desire to kill himself. And I thought, that's amazing. That's amazing, and thank you, God, for that. Because when I was his age and his brother's age, it's all I thought about. I thought about... I couldn't live anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't want to be in this world anymore because I was full of sadness. I was full of tears. I had no tears of, of, of thankfulness. I had no tears of healing and, and, and forgiveness. And all I wanted to do was just stop it. And for my boy, my boy, my boy, my son, and I don't know if some of you boys, some of you guys in the house are, are, if you're all too new and you haven't met my kids yet, but they're good boys, and and uh, they've never had to worry about living uh, the, the the life that I've led. Thankfully, thankfully to to Jesus, because it's not it, as you guys know, most of you guys know, and I've talked to most of you guys. We share a very common, very common background. And I just, the prospect of going into the future, going forward, if you fellas don't know Jesus, if you don't know the salvation, if you don't know the healing that he can do in your mind, that he can do in your heart, the forgiveness that he can give you, that he gives, that he offers freely, a future you can define your future with Christ or or conversely you can be haunted by your past be haunted by the words that that people have said to you and i that was my that was one of my biggest things when i left home is is the things that my father said to me the things that he said that i would never be which was loved or successful or or, or not that i'm super successful i don't mean to come out like that 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 that, that i was never going to be anything that I was worthy of having uh, a family who loved me. I just the story of the of the of the the the, the, the two men, the fifty and the five hundred. I know there's a lot of men in the, in Hilland, and I know I was I never went to Hilland, but I know was I was who who are worthy of the five hundred dollars being forgiven versus the fifty. And I know I was in the 500. And I know the burden, the burden of these words and the thoughts. And I know the freedom of accepting Jesus and the freedom of your heart being able to be able to beat again without sadness, without sorrow. Without shame, your heart being able to beat again to to 
just look in the mirror and realize that you are loved by a God. That's my son, sorry. Be loved by a God that, that, that keeps... I can remember, I don't know if you guys had a, had a mom or, or family members where they kept, you know, little trinkets. This is funny, actually. I just, I don't know why I thought in the middle of it. You keep, you know, your, your little drawings that you did or you, you uh, uh, little handprint that you made in kindergarten with plaster. And, and all the little arts and crafts stuff that you would make for your mom or I, I remember doing that part. Well, Jesus says here, he keeps track of all our sorrows and collects all our tears in a bottle. It says it in, in Psalms 56. So, it says, my mother, who's conversely, who, who's vastly different than our God, I had made all these, all these, all these trinkets growing up. I used to draw things. I used to love to draw. I made pictures for my mom. Well, I was, I gotta say, my kid, my both my boys were born. We're back at my mom's house, <laughs> and my mom comes with a box and goes, "Here." It was every little thing that I ever made for my mom. My mom was like, I don't want it anymore. Why do I want I'm like, what? I was devastated that my mom, I mean, I was a man in my 40s. And my mom's like, I mean, it may seem ridiculous to some of you guys. It even seems ridiculous telling the story. But I thought, what? I made all these for you, mom. Yeah, she didn't care. But Jesus, every tear, every tear, every sorrow, he holds on to them because he loves us. And you know what? I'm sure, I don't know, I mean, this is nothing scriptural, but I'm sure when we go to heaven, those jars are broken. Those jars are broken, and that's the end of our tears. It has to be. I can't think of it any, uh, any other way. And I don't... The only way, gentlemen, the only way I could, I could, I could, I could, I could see how this ends up, or how, 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 spending time in this house, in the Helen house, or spending time at, at SNL when we finally get back to going again, get the church going again, and the success of your sobriety, the success of our of depression, the success of overcoming all that depression, anxieties forgiveness of, of, of just who we are, forgiveness of our shame. There's only one way. And that is accepting Jesus. Accepting Jesus for who he is, what he's done for us, dying on the cross, and forgiving us of our sins. Gentlemen, I'm going to bow, bow my head. And I just want to pray with you and say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for loving us thank you Jesus for just more than we loving us more than we could ever imagine more than we could ever thought we could be loved thank you Jesus for forgiving us thank you Jesus for forgiving us of all the stupid things that we've done the stupid things that we've said and just and I thank you for wiping the slate clean. I know you love me. I know you forgive me. And I thank you for what you've done on the cross, Lord Jesus. And then, Lord Jesus, in your precious name, I ask it. Amen. Now, gentlemen, my name's Steve Bennett. I forgot to tell you that at the beginning. If some of you don't know me, Steve Bennett. And if you have access to Facebook, I'm on Facebook, and I will chit-chat with anybody, anytime, as long as I'm awake. If you want to Facebook message me, or we also have a Facebook page. Not many guys look at it, I don't know why, but it's uh, 365, Knowing Christ 365, I think it's called. And um, But, again, like I say, if you want to come uh, talk, chit-chat with me on, on anytime, as long as I'm awake, I will... I will acknowledge you guys i will say hello and if i don't have time i'll say i'll call you back in a minute i'm still in contact with a bunch of guys from the house so i uh i look forward to uh once again meeting you guys face to face because this is a little weird going through my 
iPad out on my deck. Uh, I miss you guys. I really do. I really do miss visiting with you and just sharing what what's going on in your world. I look forward to meeting you guys again or seeing you guys again. And I look forward to hearing of your successes and what's going on in your world. Uh, I thank you for listening. And uh, I'm going to try and make it out there. So talk to you later.